Okay, let's begin now. Can you all hear me fine? Yes. Okay, okay let's get started then. So we have a five digit number that has a digits has a product of 120. And we're looking for the greatest five digit number such that the digits have a product of 120. What's the sum of the digits of n? Okay, so the key idea to this problem is noticing that the number will be as big as possible when the, this first digit right here is as big as possible. So when will this first digit be as big as possible? So what are the possible values for this first digit? So in order to maximize the number, if it's nine, can it be nine? Well, in order for it to be nine, then the 120 must have two factors of three, but it only has one factor of three, so it can't be nine. So nine doesn't work. Now what about the next smallest, eight? Can it be eight? Well, yes, because 120 includes two cubed, which is eight. So we can have eight as a large digit. So which is our first digit here? So this is eight. So now we can cancel this two cubed term since we already used it in the eight. And also remember here that there are infinite supplies of ones. We can have ones, we can multiply ones as many times as we want, and it won't really change our number. So can we now repeat, the, next can we repeat right the use of digits in this well, what's problem? What's the maximum for this value? Well, our factors are three and five. So the maximum would just be five. Because now what about this next number here? Well, since we already got rid of the five, now we only have three left. Well, and of course the ones, but the maximum value in this digit is a three. Now three is gone. So these numbers must both be one. So the reason that we did this is that we must maximize these larger digits first. That's our priority. Because the small digits, they don't really add much of a thing. So more importantly, we must maximize these larger digits to the left, and then we'll maximize the smaller digits. So therefore, the maximum would be when this is, this is 8, this is 5, and this is 3. So our sum would just be 8 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1. This is 18. Any questions? So we can't repeat digits in this okay, then, problem. Let's move on. Let's look at number one on homework. Which of the following numbers has the smallest prime factor? Um, I so think of course we know the smallest one. prime is two. So the smallest, if it has a factor of two, then it must be the smallest prime factor. And clearly we see that 58 is even. So since 58 is even, it has a prime factor of two. And we're asked to find the smallest prime factor. And since it is the smallest prime, it has the smallest prime factor. So 58 is our answer. And we can check that no other numbers are even. So 58 is indeed our answer. Let's move on to the next problem. Wait, I can't hear, wait. Did somebody ask a question for any of the problems? Yes, I did. Maybe I'm, for some reason I can't hear it, so can you type in the chat then, maybe? If you have a question. Because I, I don't, I, for some reason I didn't hear the question. So whoever had a question, can you please type in the chat? Oh, you're wondering that you could, if you re, if you could re, repeat digits. Oh, okay. So we could repeat digits, but then we are trying to maximize the digits in order. So if you had some other value, if you had like nine, eight, eight, three, five, or something, three, three, one, for, for example, then yes, it, there's no problem. with nothing wrong with repeat digits. It's just that we want to maximize this. And wishing, what if you had like two and two, for example, and then five? But but then we're trying to maximize the number, and that will be maximized in this. This digit, this digit is large, as large as possible. Okay, so I think maybe for some reason I can't hear you. So just type your question to the chat then, I guess. Okay, let's move on to number two on homework. So what is the sum of the two smallest prime factors of 250? So first, let's find the prime factorization of 250. And this is pretty simple, 25 times 10. So 25 times 10 would just be two times five cubed. Now we're asked to find the sum of two smallest prime factors. So what are the two smallest prime factors? Well, there are two and five. So our answer is seven. 
Let's move on to the next problem. If 3 to the p plus 3 to the 4 is 90, and 2 to the r plus 44 is 76, and 5 cubed plus 6 to the s is 1421, what's the product of p, r, and s? OK, so let's look at, look at this problem then. We have that 3 to the p plus 81, which is 3 to the 4. is equal to 90. And that means that 3 to the p is equal to 9. And this means that p is equal to 2. OK, so now let's look at the value of this next equation here. We have that 2 to the r plus 44 is 76. And this means that 2 to the r is just going to be 32. And that implies r is 5. And the reason you got the r and 5, you can just if you want to evaluate, you can just test some small values, and then you can figure out that 2 to the 5 is 32. And now for this last equation, we have 6 to the s plus 125 is equal to 1, 4, 2, 1. And this means that 6 to the s is equal to 1, 2, 9, 6. And that implies that s is equal to 4. So now we're going to find the product. So 2 times 5 times 4, which is 40. Our answer to this problem is 40. Any questions? Let's move on to the other problem or problem then. So how many three digit numbers are there that are divisible by 13? Okay, so in order to do this problem, we need to find a lower bound and an upper bound. So what's the smallest three digit number that's divisible by 13? So in order to do that, let's divide 99 by 13. We get seven, excluding the remainders. So the largest two digit multiple of 13 will just be seven times 13 which is 91. So in the smallest three digit multiple of 13 is eight times 13. And you know, we, we, didn't, we don't even have to evaluate this because it doesn't really matter. And now let's look at the upper bound. So we have a lot of numbers. You can do nine times 13, 10 times 13, so on. And now let's look at the upper bound. And this will be when 999 divided by 13. And 999 divided by 13. Well, this will just be, we can just do some division here. And you get that this is going to be 76. So our upper bound is 76 times 13. Now ignoring this, because that isn't. We have the range from 8 times 13 to 76 times 13. OK, so how many numbers are from this range, 8 to 76? So how do we evaluate this? So essentially, we have to find the number of numbers from this list, 8, 9, 10, so on, all the way till 76. So common mistake on the homework was that they just did 76 minus 8, and they got 68. And they thought, OK, there's going to be 76 minus 8 numbers. But the reason this is wrong is actually that, OK, let's just consider subtracting 7 from all these numbers. Let me get 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. We subtract 7, 69. So how many numbers are there? It's essentially the same thing as 69. So the reason that this trick works, and we don't directly subtract it, it's because these two numbers right here are included as well. So if, if we were to just do 76 minus 8, we would not include one of these numbers. So typically, when we do exclusive, so let me write it out, a, a plus 1, dot, 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 all the way till b. How many numbers are in this list when a and b are exclusive? Yeah, it does say three digit numbers, but we're looking at, we have the minimum is 8 times 13, maximum is 76 times 13. So we, so, so these are all three digit numbers, the actual multiple of 13. But we're essentially counting the number of multiples from 8 times 13 to 76 times 13. It's the same as counting the number of numbers from 8 to 76. Does that answer your question? OK, so now we have a, a, to a plus 1 to b. And the number of numbers from here is just going to be b minus a plus 1. And the reason for this is they're in in inclusive. And we'll see some later problems that involve the same technique. Okay, let's move on to number five. The number n is a two-digit number. When n is divided by nine, the remainder is one. When it's divided by 10, the remainder is three. So let's write out the digits here. So we're given immediately that when n is divided by 10, the remainder is three. So then this digit right here is three. Okay, now let's look here. When n is divided by 9, the remainder is 1. So that, if you look at the divisibility rule, we know that the sum has to, has to be 1. 
or some has to be basically the remainder when one divided by nine. So it has to be one, 10, et cetera. And we see that anything past 10 won't work since it's too large, and one doesn't work since we already have three. So the sum of the digits is 10. And that essentially means that this digit is seven. So now it's remainder when it's divided by 11. 73, the remainder when it's divided by 11, will just be seven. That's our answer for this problem. Now let's move on to number six. So number six, let Z be a six digit positive integer such as 247, 247, whose first three digits are the same as its last three digits taken in the same order. Each of the following numbers must also be a factor of Z. So let's write our number in general form. So it's gonna be ABC and then ABC. The reason for this is we have these three digits are the same as these three digits. So how, so let's look at these option choices that we're given here. So let's first test if it's divisible by 11. So is it divisible by 11? So let's use the no. divisibility rule. So we're given that if it has to be divisible by 11, then A plus C plus B has to be equal to the sum B, that more clear, B plus A plus C. So the difference of these sums has to be a multiple of 11, the absolute value of the difference. So is this true that A plus C plus B minus B plus A plus C? So is it true that the absolute value is gonna be multiple 11? Well, we can cancel the terms. B cancels with B, A cancels with A, and C cancels with C. So the sum here in the inside is zero. And zero is indeed a multiple of 11. So indeed, our answer is just gonna be A. Any questions on the homework? Just a quick question. You made Amy when you are in sixth grade, right? And it's not about the homework. Okay, then let's move on to today's topic, which is, so we're gonna start off with some modular arithmetic problems. So essentially, let's try this out, this technique with an example. So find the smallest positive number greater than one, at least the remainder of one when divided by two, three, four, five, and six. Sorry if I, maybe ABC, sorry if I didn't show it. I'll, I, maybe I forgot to put it. I'll fix that for next time. Okay, so um, let's look at this number here. A number greater than one, it leaves a remainder of one when divided by two. So that essentially means it's one more, one more than a multiple of two, two. It's also one more than a multiple of three, since that's the remainder when it's divided by three. It's also one more than a multiple of four. It's also one more than a multiple of five. It's also one more than a multiple of six. Okay, so if it's one more than a multiple of two, three, four, five, and six, so that's the same thing as being one more, one more than a multiple of two, three, four, five, and six. And that's essentially the one more than a multiple of the LCM of two, three, four, five, and six. The reason for this is if, in order for it to be the multiple of two, three, four, five, and six, it needs to be a multiple of the LCM. Okay, so what's the LCM of this? Well, let's look at the greatest factors. We, let's write the prime factorization. This is just gonna be two, three, two squared, five, two times three. The LCM is, okay, let's look at the maximum power of two. Maximum power of two is two squared. Maximum power of three is just three. Maximum power of five, well, that's just five. Okay, so now what is the value of this value you think, value thing over here? Okay, so we can just evaluate it very easily. And this is equal to 60. So our answer is just gonna be one more than a multiple of 60. So what's the smallest number greater than one? That's one more than multiple of 60. That's just gonna be 61. Okay, so know that the problem asks greater than one here. So if a number has to be greater than one, then essentially has to be a number greater than one. If it said instead, instead of being one greater than one, instead it would, 
if it just said being one more, if it didn't say this condition over here, greater than one, then the number would just be one, since that also works. But we're given this condition, so make sure to remember that it has to be 61, not just one. Any questions on this problem? Okay, let's move on then. Let's take, tackle a very similar problem. This time we're gonna look at subtraction instead of addition. So this is essentially, um, so how many positive three digit numbers have a remainder of two when divided by six, five when divided by nine, and seven when divided by 11? So let's look at here. This essentially means it's gonna be four less than a multiple of six. Okay, make sure you understand why, because four less than a multiple of six essentially means a remainder of two when divided by six. Make sure you understand why this is true. Also means four less than a multiple of nine. Four less than a multiple of 11. Okay, so now let's, let's okay, essentially the LCM of them. So what is six? Six is two times three. Nine is three squared. 11 is just 11. So what's the LCM of these numbers? Well, it's just gonna be equal to four less than multiple of the LCM of these numbers. And what's the LCM? Maximum power of two is just two times three squared times 11, which is the same thing as being multiple of, of essentially if you evaluate this, multiple of 98. So now we're not done yet. We found that it has to be four less than multiple of 198, but we're asked to find how many positive three-digit numbers have remainder. So how many positive three-digit numbers are four less than a multiple of 98? So let's write them out again. So our first number is gonna be 198 times one minus four. The second number is 198 times two minus four and 198 times three minus four. 198 times four minus four. 198 times five minus four. And 198 times six minus four. But notice that this term here doesn't work because 198 times six is gonna be like close to 1,200. So this doesn't work. So we're left with five possibilities. So our answer is these five over here. So five. Okay, so any questions on this problem? Well, let's move on then. For any questions, make sure the I'll just highlight the key ideas. Mm -hmm. Looking that's four less than multiple of six, nine, and 11. And then we just did some finding the number of numbers that actually work. Okay, let's move on then. Now we're gonna move on to a topic called digit cycles. So let's, let me explain this with a quick example. What's the unit digit of 13 to the power of 2012? Well, I have a question, why is it four less? Okay, so four less, you know why? Because it's a remainder of two and divided by six, that's essentially mean four less than a multiple of six. Remainder of five and divided by nine means that it's four less than a multiple of nine. And seven one divided by 11, it means four less than a multiple of 11. So I know this is somewhat a tricky concept here. So hopefully that made it more clear because we see that it's four less. So in general, when you're doing the other, it's not the other way around. The reason is for, it's like, we see some variance here. Two, five, seven, there's, not, there's nothing, there's no really thing that we clearly see here. But if you look the other way around, so we can just do it's negative four, negative four, negative four. In fact, the other problem we had, plus one, plus one. But now we see, we have to look for consistency. And there is a way to solve it just directly without doing the four less trick, but that would be much harder. And beyond the scope of this class, so I won't be talking about it. So in order to, we'd have to have four less than all these numbers. If you have like two less than this, and two less than this, and three less than this number here, and five less than this number, for example, we would really, we wouldn't really know. We, we can't just use a trick of doing the LCM minus the number. So that's why we use this trick here. So let's move on then to this unit digit cycles again. Okay, so what is the unit digit of 13 to 2012? So, okay, this just seems humongous. There's no way we can actually evaluate this. So the unit digit, right? So we can ignore the tens digit. 
since it doesn't really affect the initiative at all. So really all we have to evaluate is three to the 2012. Since the 10 won't really add any, anything to the incident or change it at all. But even three to the 2012, there's still no way we could possibly evaluate this. So let's try some small values. Well, we have three to the zero. Well, let's actually start with three to the one. Three to the one is equal to three. Three squared is nine. Three cubed is nine times three, 27. But we can ignore the two because we're only looking for the units to get. And three to the four is gonna be seven times three, which is 21. And the unit digit of that is one. And then three to the five is going to be one times three, which is three. Three to six will just be three times three, which is nine. Three to seven will be nine times three, which is 27. And the unit digit of that is just seven. Three to eight is just gonna be seven times three, which one, the unit digit of it. Mm -hmm. And we can see a pattern emerging here. Three, not seven, one. Three, nine, seven, one. And it'll continue all the way until 13 to the 2012. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now what we see here is that it repeats every four terms. Mm -hmm. So every four terms it repeats. Mm -hmm. So that means we just have to find what the remainder is when 2012 was divided by four. So we know that 2012 is a multiple of four, or at least a remainder of zero when divided by four. So, so that means essentially three to the 2012 will have the same unit digit as three to the four. The reason for this is that, like, we can think about cycles of four. If you take regular number of cycles of four after three to the four, we'll get three to the 2012. So then that means three to the 2012 will have the same unit digit as three to the four, which is one. So our answer to this problem is one. So this was a somewhat, like, smart approach to this problem. So feel free to ask any questions. I don't think I can hear you for some reason. I'll check that out later. But for now, type, try to type in the chat. Oh, hello, can you hear me? So I have a question, why did you divide by four? So we have, I have a question that why did you divide by four? Oops. So the reason we divided by four is because we see that cycle repeats every four terms. So if you do like, some other, if you just keep evaluating this over and over, so you see that divide by four because three to 2012, is, if we like take four cycles down, is equal to three to the 2008, because we just made it four down, and then we, we can make, make another four down, that's three to 2004, and we can make another four down, three to 2000, because essentially we're just going from here, three to 2008, here, we just keep going along the same path here, and then this is three to the 1996, does it make sense to you? Then so on, we can just keep going dot, 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 dot. And we get that's equal to three to four. Because we're just keep going multiples of four down every time. Same thing is going from here to here. If it's, what, if it's not divisible by four, if it's not divisible by four, okay. So if it's not divisible by four, it would be the same thing. If it's like five, actually I'll talk about the next problem here since this is a problem that's not divisible by four. Okay, so find the unit digit of 2 to the 1026. So I'll explain what if it's not divisible by 4 here. Okay, so 2 to the 1026. So let's do the same thing, pattern finding. We have 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8. 2 to the 4 is 6. And 2 to the 5. Well, 2 to the 5 is just going to be 6 times 2, which is 2. And 2 to the 6, we don't really have to evaluate from here, but I think you guys get it from now. You just do the same thing over again. We get that in the same rows, we have the same thing repeated over. So now what's the remainder when 1,026 is divided by 4? At least the remainder of 2. So that means 2 to the 1,026 will be the same as 2 to the 1022 is the same as 2 to the 1080, which is equal to 2 to the 1014, dot, dot, dot. So here, you're just going to keep repeating the same pattern of 2 to the 1026. And eventually, since it has a remainder of 2 when divided by 4, it's also going to be equal to 2 squared. And 2 squared has a unit of 4, so our answer is 4.
So does it make sense why what we did for if it's not divisible by four? Does that make sense? Okay, so any, any other questions on this problem here? So I'll just go over the quick main points of this problem again. And whenever you see these kind of powers, just, just try to evaluate, find a pattern. And even though it won't always have a pattern, generally, if it comes on the ANCA, it will have a pattern. So, so whenever you see these big complicated powers, or even for other things, in general, you can just try to look for a pattern and maybe it will work out. Okay, so now I'll move on. So you don't see any questions. And now this is a slightly more tricky problem from the AMCA. What is a unit digit of 19 to 19 plus 99 to 99? Okay, so let's try to evaluate, evaluate each of these parts separately. We have 19 to 19 and 99 to 99. So 19 to 19. We're only asked to find the unit digit. So let's ignore the one. So essentially we have 9 to 19. So let's look at some small values now. 9 to 1, 9, 9 to 2, 1, 9 cubed, 3, sorry, 9, and so on. And then 9 to 4, again, there's 1. So we see 9, 1, 9, 1, 9, 1, so on. Same pattern. So now we see the 9 to 19, these are remainder of 1 when divided by 2. So we have 9 to 19 will be equal to 9 to the 1, which is equal to 9. So the unit digit of 19 to 19 is 9. We can also do the same thing for 99 to 99. Well, again, ignore the 9, since it's not in the unit digit place. This is the same as 9 to 99, which again, leaves the remainder of 1 when divided by 4. So it's also equal to 9 to 1. So this is also 9 over here. So now we have two 9 terms over here, these two 9 terms. Nine terms. So we're asking to find some of them. So nine plus nine, which is 18. So our answer would just be eight. So does it all make sense to you how we just broke it up into its individual components? And now we'd see nine repeats nine, one, nine, one. And then we just find, okay, so nine to 19 will be, since 19 is odd, will be the same as nine to the one. So nine to the one is just nine. And same thing for nine to 99 here. Any questions? So I think we're going to move on then. So what's the 10th digit of 7 to 2011? So try to, I'm going to give you guys a minute or two to try to solve this on your own. So how do we do this? So let's do the same approach, pattern finding. So we're asked to find the 10th digit. OK, so we're asked to find the 10th digit of this value thing, this thing over here. So. Let's try to find another pattern, but this time let's look at the last two digits, not just the last digit. And the reason we look at the last two digits and not just the tenth digit is because the unit digit will cause carryover to the tenth digit. So let's just look at the last two digits as a whole. So again, let's, like, let's write some terms out and see if we can find a pattern. 7 to the 1, 0 to 7, 7 squared, 49, 7 cubed, 43. And I'll leave you, I'll leave you to do the rest and see if you can find a pattern and figure out what the last digits of this expression is. If you get an answer, you can private message me. 
your answer. So again, try to use the same approach for units to do it instead for tens to do it. So I think I've given the time to work on it now. And four is the correct answer. We adopt all of you who got it right. Now let me explain the solution. Okay, so 43. So now 43 times seven is 301. But we care about the last two digits, so just a one. And then we can repeat the pattern. We see seven to the five, it's gonna be 07, 07. Seven to the six will be 49. Seven to the seven is going to be 7 to the 7 is going to be 43. And then 7 to the 4 is going to be 0, 1. So we see a pattern again. And now we just look for the remainder when 2011 is divided by 4. So we can easily see that 2011 has a remainder of 3 when divided by 4. So since it has a remainder of 3 when divided by 4, 7 to the 2011 has the same last two digits as 7 to the 3. So that means that the last two digits of 7 to 2011 is just 43. So our answer is the 10th digit, which is 4. I think I can hear you guys now, so you can, I think I changed some settings. Now I can hear you, so now you can also unmute yourself and ask. Can you hear us now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, cool. Yeah, I had a quick question. Um, so for your like, 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 how would you know when to like? Uh, I've been trying to ask the question where like you know for the mod, not the mods. Um, where like, that 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 divisor question where you like did it's four less than the multiple. How would you know when to do something for something less or something more? Like in the one more, and then there was four less. So in general, on those kind of modular arithmetic questions, so uh, let me go back to it. So the reason we did, oh, what, less and more. So if we see, okay, it's one, it's one more than multiple of two, and two more than, or oh, sorry, one more than multiple of three, and so on, we see, if, oh, if it's the same, one, 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 one. If it's one more than a lot of multiples, then we can use just the regular way, since you know it's going to be one more than the LCM of all those multiples as well. Right. But now if you see like, oh, it's one more than multiple of two, and maybe like two than a multiple of three. So then we see that, okay, so the, the difference of these is one. So in general, generally, if it's not just gonna be the same, then you might say, okay, if it's not the same, maybe how about what if it's like less than maybe? And then we can see that on this case, oh, it's two, four less than, it's five, four less than for all these three divisors. So then we essentially so found that here. So this yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's a quite slick technique, actually. I never actually try doing that. I usually just keep guessing until I get a number. Yeah, that'll take a lot of time, especially when time is very valuable on the MCA. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, in general, just try to find the common remainder that you see here. So just see if there, are, and usually you won't ask, you won't be asked to find something that's not this nice like this. So you have to look out for these things whenever you see these kinds of questions. How do you make Amy in sixth grade? Okay, can we talk about that later? Okay, so can we move on to the problem over here now? Uh, okay, so we have this value over here. Now, any yeah, I had a question here. Why is there two sevens to the fours? Okay, so why are there two sevens to the fours? Can you rephrase that, please? Um, shouldn't it be seven to the eight? Uh, you'd be like seven to the five, seven to the six, and so on, but then why do you put another sorry, seven? Sorry, that was a... That was a I meant, to, I meant to say something to eight. Sorry. Yeah. That was that. I have one more question. Are we allowed to suggest ideas for problems or like okay, early? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, sure. You can say just, just, just ideas. Okay. Yeah. But let's move on to this problem here. The product of two 99 digit numbers, 30303, so I'm not going to read it out. And 505, I'm not going to read the whole thing out. It's just a really long number. Has a thousand digit of A. And you have a of B. What is the sum of A and B? So even though this is not a power question, again, multiplying these out, we can't multiply this out. That would be really extremely tedious. 
So note that we're only asked to find the thousand digit and the units digit. So since we only have to look for the last four digits, since this would be the units digit, and this would be the thousand digit. So since we're only looking for the last four digits, we only have to look for the last four digits of our number. Okay, so the last four digits of our number here is just gonna be zero, three, oh, three. The last four digits of this number, zero, five, oh, five. Okay, so then our product is just going to be 303. So our product will just be, zero doesn't really matter. So 303 times 505. And a quick trick doing this mentally is to note that this is essentially 15 times 101 squared. And I might talk about this later in another class, but 101 squared is 10201. Uh, so you can evaluate that. So 10201 times 15, would just be 15, 3015. Okay, so now we have our number here. We're asked to find some of the thousands and units digit. So we care about the last four digits, and the thousand digit is this one, and this is the units digit. And their sum is just going to be three plus five, which is eight. Any questions on this problem? No. Okay then, let's move on. Now we're gonna move on to a topic called algebraic number theory. So this is using algebra techniques in number theory problems. Let's see how it actually works with this problem here. A two digit number is there such that the product of the digits plus the sum is equal to the number. What's the unit digit of the number? So a key thing to be on the lookout here is that we have a two digit number and we're, we're mostly dealing with the digits, the product of the digits, the sum of the digits. So maybe you can somehow express our number in terms of the digits. Let's recall our number AB, where AB are the digits. So how can we express AB in terms of A and B individually? Well, so this is a 10 digit. This is a unit digit. Um, so then this would just be 10 A plus B. Well, so that's our two digit number here. And it's there such that the product of the digits plus the sum of the digits, which is a plus b, these, these have to be equal. Since so this is the number, this is a product, and this is the sum. So that means that 9a is equal, it's equal to ab. And now know that the tens digit, which is a, it can't be zero, since it's a leading digit of a number. So we can just divide by a and nothing will happen. So we have nine is equal to eight. And that means b is nine. So and we know that the b is unit digit. So that means our unit digit is nine. Uh, I, had a I had a question real quick. Yeah? So um, when you when you did it algebraically, uh, so 10a plus b, so are you not supposed to count the like so when it says the sum of the digits are you are, are you like not going to multiply by 10 for the sum of the tens digit no because we're asking for the sum of the digits so if you have a number like 37 the sum of the digits would just be three plus seven. Oh, okay never mind i was thinking something else okay so any other questions okay then let's move on so this next problem over here. Suppose A, B, and C are non-zero real numbers such that A plus Z plus C is zero. What are the possible values for A, A over absolute value of A, B over absolute value of B, and C over absolute value of C, and ABC over absolute value of ABC? So now the trick to this problem is doing a little bit of, so we're asked to find, this, do a little bit of maybe like casework for example, so essentially, we're given that a plus b plus c is zero. So even though this is number theory, it's, let's do some casework on this problem, actually. So there's some cases that we have to consider. So the, you know, first of all, note that the only cases possible are going to be when a, b, and c. So either two can be positive. So you have two positive numbers and one negative number, or one positive number and two negative numbers. 
And know that, let's say we had three negative numbers, for example, A, B, and C are all negative. If these were all negative, then the sum would be less than zero. On the contrary, if they were all positive, then the sum would be above zero. So you have to have that two positive, one negative, or one positive, two negative. So these are our only two cases. Okay, so two positive, one negative. So what's the first case? So if, if let's just call A and B are positive for the sake of it, and C is negative. And note that it doesn't really matter if, let's say, B was negative and A and C were positive, it would essentially be the same thing. Okay, so if A and B are both positive numbers, then this term right here. So if A is positive and the absolute value of A is positive, then this term would just be one. But if, if B is also positive and the absolute value is positive, it would also be one. Because B and B let it cancel out and there's no negative terms here. But now for C, it's different. For C, this is, this is going to be negative. And this is positive, since it's absolute value. And it's a negative number over a positive number, which is negative. So it, this will actually be negative one for this term. Now what about ABC over absolute value ABC? Well, this term here. Well, okay, so now the, let's look at the product. So the product was gonna be positive times positive times negative, which is negative. So this is gonna be negative. And the absolute value will of course be positive. So then we just have, this is gonna be negative one, sum is zero. Now for the other case, one positive, two negative. Okay, so if one, one is positive and two is negative, then we have, okay, let's say, for, without loss of generality. So basically the reason I'm just designating A and B to be positive is because let's say we had A and C positive instead of A and B, then this, it would just be the same thing, except B and C are swapped kind of, so it doesn't really matter what we choose to be positive and negative. So if this is A, this is B and comma C, then we have that this term is gonna be positive over positive, which is one. This term would just be neg pos sorry, negative over positive, which is again, negative one. This term, negative over positive, negative one. Sorry, this, the, I'm talking about these two terms, let me be more clear. So A over A is gonna be positive because A is positive. B over absolute value B is gonna be negative since we're dividing a negative number by a positive number. And same thing for C as B. And what about ABC and AB, absolute value of ABC? Let me just clear this up a little bit. So absolute, so ABC over absolute value ABC. So we have that the product is going to be positive since a positive number times a negative number times a negative number is going to be positive. So this will be positive. And now what about ABC here? Also positive. So this will be a, the swap. And know that ABCs will cancel out and there's going to be no negative terms. So this will just be one. And this again is zero. So our only possible value is zero. Any questions? Uh, one question. So how, I don't understand how you came up with the cases. So note that the ABC, let's look at this, let's look at this condition here. A plus C plus C is zero. Okay, uh, yeah. I think here, so let me re-explain that in more detail. So A plus C plus C is zero. So let's just take some examples, for example. Let's say they're all positive, like three, two, and three. The sum can never be zero. All the numbers are positive. So you, you understand that part, right? If the small yes. numbers are positive, yeah. those will be greater than zero always. And if all numbers are negative, it'll be a negative number then. Yeah, it'll always be less than zero. There's no way it can be zero. Now, the two cases are like two of the numbers are positive, or one of the numbers are positive. So let me explain. So if two numbers are positive, like two plus one, and one of the numbers are negative, like minus three, it can be equal to zero. But then if maybe like one number is positive, like maybe let's say like uh, three, and then we have minus one, minus two, it can also be zero. Then we see that the only possibilities, so in general there would be like, uh, if you were trying to approach this problem, there would be like four cases, A, A, B, and C are all positive, two of them are positive, one of them is positive, or none of them are positive. But we see that we can eliminate two cases, because that's not possible. Now we're left with two cases, where two of them are positive or one of them is possible. Then we have these two cases over here, and now we just try them both out. And then like, I'll just give an example to make it more clear. How about let's just use this here. If A is two, B is one, this is negative three, for example. Then we can have two over absolute value of two is one. One over absolute value of one is one. And negative three over absolute value of negative three, which is three, is gonna be negative one. And for the product, two times one times negative three, so two times one times negative three, which is negative six, this would be six. 
So this would be negative. So we see that if the, so now, does it make sense now? And I'll also address this case, which would be, uh, let's just, uh, let me just think, three, negative one, negative two. And we have the same thing here. This term would be positive, this term would be positive. This would be negative, this would be negative, and you can find the product, and this would be positive. So does that now make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Any other questions by anybody else? This is a tricky problem. Okay then, I think we can move on then. If there are no other questions, this is a tricky problem, so it's okay, it's okay. Let's move on to, this is a slightly easier problem than before, so. So we're given that two positive integers, x and y, the two smallest positive integers, for it's a product is 360, and x is a square, and the product of 360 and y is acute. So we're asked to find the sum of x and y. So, okay, let's look at the prime factorization of 360. Whenever you see these kind of factor problems and all, the, the number one thing you always should think of is prime factorization. So what's the prime factorization of 360? Well, 360 is 36 times 10, and 36 is two squared times three squared, times two times five, which is two cubed times three squared times five. So this is a quick way to get to prime factorization without actually doing the tree method. So now let's look at the possibility so that it's a square. Hmm. So now multiple of this number has to have all of its exponents greater. So it would be like two, three plus, so anything greater than three, times three to the power of two, two plus anything greater than two, times five to the power of one, anything greater than one. And also note that in order for the product to be a perfect square, in order for this multiple, all the exponents are even. So do all of you know that, uh, that if the number is a perfect square, all the exponents are even? Basically, the, if you don't already know, I'll just quickly explain. If you have like three to the three squared times five to the eight times seven to the four, for example, then this would be a perfect square because all the exponents are even. So this would be three times five to the four times seven squared, all that squared. Okay, then let me move on then. So in order for it to be a perfect square, all the exponents have to be even. So if you don't know that, I recommend knowing that for the future. So then what's the minimum possible value of this multiple? Well, it would be the largest even power greater than three, so two to the four. Two is already a multiple of, of two is already even, so we can just keep it like two, three squared. And five, well, you can make it five squared since it has to be even. So now we have that this, this number over here, so we have that our original number times some x, the x that we're given in the problem, times x. Sorry, this should not be this. So let me rewrite that actually to make it more clear. We have that this number two cubed times three squared times five times x is equal to this, equal to this. And that means we can just divide this out. We see that it's gonna be two to the x is equal to two to the four minus three and three squared, three squared terms they cancel. And then we're left with two to the four minus three times five to two minus one, and this is equal to two times five, which is 10. So x is equal to 10. You write that in a different color on the side. So now, uh, let me clear some more space here. I'll go clear this for now. And now let's look at what, when it will be a perfect cubed. So again, we have the same thing over here. Two, two to the three, we have the same thing over here. Two to the three, three, some two to the power of three, something greater than three, times three to the power of something greater than two, times five to the power of something greater than one. So in order for it to be a perfect cube, all the exponents have to be a multiple of three. So when will this be true? Well, the minimum value when this is true is when it's two to the three, times three to the cubed, times five cubed. Because we're trying to look for the greatest possible value greater than it. And let's use six, for example, that would be larger. And we're asked to find the minimum, so the two smallest as we're given the problem. So we're trying to minimize it. So in general, this would be here, easier there. So then we have two cubed times three cubed times five cubed. So then we divide this, we do we, uh, this divided by 
and the value is going to be 360, which is 2 cubed times 3 squared times 5. And what do we get when we do this? Well, we can cancel some terms here. We get, so let me just, so this is going to be equal to 2 cubed terms cancel. 3 to the power of 3 my, divided by 3 to the 2 is 3. And 5 cubed divided by 5 is just 5 squared, so this is 75. And since we're asked to find sum, we're just, we're just going to be 75 plus 10, which is 85. So any questions on this problem? So let me just re-explain some. So if you have like even exponents, then it's perfect square. So we look for the smallest square that is, has exponents greater than 360. And same thing for the cubed. So that's the key thing to look out. And reason, so you look at the prime factorization. So let's move on if there are no questions. So this is our last problem then for today. So in the multiplication problem below, a, B, C, and D are different digits. What's the value of A plus B? Okay, so let's, this seems really confusing. We have so many variables and random things. We don't really know what to do from here. So let's try to look at what this, this thing here really is. C, D, C, D. C, D, C, D. So is there a way you can like maybe express this as something else? So a key thing to note here is that this is C, D, 0, 0, plus C, D. And CD00 is something but 100 times CD. And this is just 1 times CD. And to sum this up, we get 101 CD. 101 times CD. And CD, just to be clear, CD is like two digits that are put together. So like 37, three, C would be 3, D would be 7, for example. So now 101 times CD. So now look here. Look at our problem here. We have 101 times CD here. We have a term CD here. So, of course, this has to be 101. So, ABA is 101. And now, all we have to do is find A plus B, which is 1 plus 0. Oops. 1 plus 0, which is 1. So, that's our answer with this problem. Any questions on this problem? So if there are no questions, so now these are the homework problems for this week. I'll send a video of this class. I'll send a video of this class in addition to, I'll send a video of this class in addition to the homework submission form and this handout the, with the documents and the homework problems. So try your best in the homework problems. And then, and also before we end this class, are there any final questions about any of the problems that we went over today? Any, any problem from? Is there another way to solve that this problem, the one right now? Because I was thinking about like expanding ABA and CD. Yeah, that would be much harder. Um, the, the other way, if there, if there are other ways, I'm sure they would be much harder. This is definitely the simplest technique. So in general, when you see common terms or like, things you can try to factor out maybe. So this is like, whenever you have numbers, we see that even if you do equations, like if you have like variables, the variables could be anything. But here we're given an additional condition. Like all these have to be integers, whole numbers essentially. So if we, we could use variables, that, that would run into a lot of complicated things that we don't really want to deal with here. And I'm sure there could be a way of doing, using that, but it would be much, much harder than this simple method here. So the reason we didn't actually use variables and instead try to use the smart trick is because when we're dealing with numbers, in general, we, we have an additional condition that they have to be whole numbers. So we can try to group use something about numbers and try to factorize it maybe. So even though there are a lot of variables and we don't really have, we only have one equation really, we're given that the digits are all integers. And that's the main condition here. So then we have CD, CD. We would like group these terms together. We, in general, when you see, so let me just actually emphasize on this point here. So if you have like 878, 878, we see there's a factor of 1001. Because it's one, this is one essentially. And then you can think of it as being 1001 times 878. So, in general, for these kinds of problems where you see like repeating digits, like, oh, let me give an example. 
like um, 3376, 3376. Three, so whenever you see repeating digits, that could mean that maybe there's something we can factorize out and use that to solve the problem. So re repeating digits are assigned, maybe factorize. So this would factorize to 3376 three, times 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So does that make sense? How we thought of this factorization is because we see these repeating digits. That simply means you use kind of a factorization. Okay, so does that answer your question then? Yeah, that answer. Thank you. So any other questions from anybody else? You can do either in the chat, and I think I can hear you guys all now. Fine. So you can do either. Okay, so I don't think there are any other questions. So then, so I'll so just make sure I'll just go over the key things that we went over today, which are modular arithmetic, a trick of looking at less than or more than a multiple. We also went over the unit digits and the other digit cycles. And in general, when you see on the ANCA, just look for a pattern. Most likely, there'll be something you can find. That's another thing. And then for the for again for these kind of algebraic problems, the key thing is usually you find prime factorization or try to factorize number in special ways. We also went over the re repeat, repeating digit trick here. So that concludes it for the, today's class. Thank you for coming, everyone, and see you next class. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Sohil. Thank you very much. Bye.